Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. My name's Dan Musson and I'm from uh, C3 SYD North Sydney. So I have a I'm married to Anna and we have a son, uh, Will, who's 14. When Anna and I were started dating and getting serious, it was one of her non-negotiables that I had to come to church. For a long time we sat, um, we were kind of takers, if you like, uh, and it wasn't until we opened the Mossman location originally that we started to sort of move into a service mode. So we were tithing regularly, we would attend vision builders, call it was sort of comfortable giving, but it never really affected our lifestyle in any way. And I leapt into this business opportunity and, um, and uh, it gradually f failed uh, and it ended up costing us everything. It cost us our house and our savings and, and then COVID hit. We were in a really tough, Place. I just felt like every door was shutting. Like it felt like I'd failed my wife, I'd failed my family. I think it challenges your faith when you find yourself in that, in that sort of deep valley where, um, where there doesn't seem to be a way out. And it got to the point where I said to Anna, look, I think I'm just gonna have to stack shelves at Woolies. I'd apply and they'd knock me back and I'm like, I'm getting knocked back from stacking shelves. You know, maybe the test is how do you go in the, when it's tough? And we just had that same mentality. You know, we just said, we just got to keep turning up. Um, uh, you know, this is not a time to turn around, it's a time to turn, turn up. We had wonderful Connect group leaders uh, in um, Andrew and Pippa Tyndale and that Connect group and the ability to connect with our pastors and to, and to be engaged with the church, um, you know, was really critical. We got this Woolies voucher from uh, Pastor Richard Forsyth, who was, who, who handed out this money and I remember saying to Anna, we can't accept this, this is for needy people. And she said, we are the needy people. And we ended up um, sort of in this point of desperation, not knowing where else to go, where we reached out to uh, Richard and Kate about the freedom ministry. We each went through the process uh, separately um, within a couple of weeks of each other. I had a job interview on, on uh, the Tuesday. The next morning Anna went and did her freedom ministry. By four o'clock in the afternoon I got a call from the CEO saying 
would like to verbally offer you the job. So it's, you know, things happen quickly and then, you know, then exceed any expectation from that regard. And we have a son, uh, Will, last summer went to summer camp and was baptised here afterwards, which was amazing. Even at a practical level, you know, talk about our own experience, but I get this phone call uh, and uh, it's from a counsellor who's got a family who are in financial distress because their consultant uh, husband is out of work. And I, go, I know this story. <laughs> And we were able to get our connect groups around them. We were able to fund them with some grocery and fuel vouchers. That, having gone through this stuff and knowing how valuable that is, I just want everyone to be able to do that. Uh, and when uh, we started to decentralise the CARES ministry, um, uh, Pat asked me if, if I'd take it on, and which I just think is a brilliant way for us to move church from being um, about us to about about the rest of the world. I went to our local state minister. I told her what we wanted to do. She put us, connected us with two great charities. Uh, one's called Mary's House, and then another organisation called Taldamundi. It won't be me that sort of, you know, saves them, but it might be me that builds a bridge between between um, them and that and that world, or it might be me that creates the opportunity to, uh, you know, bring that bring that light out into the world. Amazing, everybody. Come Thanks on, really give, up, give it up for there. Dan Musson, Anna Musson, Will Musson, the whole family. Thank you, Jesus. Thank well, you, Lord. Yes, well, but. everybody, we want to say a big welcome to Vision Builders 2024. <laughs> so good to see Woo. all of your faces around, surrounding us in the room yep. from every angle. Uh, Scary. You'll, you'll notice that we have changed things up. It's a little different. There's some exciting things around the room for you for later. Yeah. Uh, but we, how are you finding being on the round, Al? Yeah, well, like I said, it's a scary experience. You got people in front of you, behind you. I feel like I'm in a boxing ring, actually. It does and, feel uh, like we're going to box. You're wearing pants, so you might no, just be I'm ready to kick me. <laughs> like you normally do. <laughs> yeah. But it's exciting. Guys, um, you all look wonderful. And uh, we, we have a really special evening plan, like Jason said, it is different. And uh, we're gonna be hearing, babe, from uh, five people in just a moment. So we are looking at Vision Builders through a bit of a different paradigm, everybody. Everyone say, ooh. Yeah. And so we, we're gonna be looking at Vision Builders through five pillars, five pillars, five areas we really feel God is calling us to lean into, uh, into taking new ground, into stepping out in faith. And so we're going to be hearing from five different people about each one of these five pillars, and you're going to hear about each one of them as we go. So, are you ready? Yeah. Ready. Please turn your eyes to the screen and look at the first pillar, my lady. As a church which is called to the people of Sydney and to the city of Sydney, it is a core part of our mission to prepare a place, to prepare a place for us to come and fellowship with one another, to prepare a place for newcomers to come and experience God, and to prepare a place where we can host the people of Sydney. All through the scriptures, there are countless examples of people preparing a place. I think of the, the nation of Israel preparing the tabernacle and the place of meeting for God. I think of countless numbers of men and women of God preparing altars where the fire of God would fall. When a place here on earth is prepared for God, and he's prepared for his purposes. It is just that. It is an altar. And we as a church are mandated to prepare altars here on earth 
for people to come and meet with him. When we talk about purchasing buildings or purchasing property, it's not so that we can have a property portfolio. No, it's with this divinely appointed mandate in mind to prepare a place for people to meet with God. So this, this is our vision. This is our vision for each one of our locations to have a permanent building. This means right now the purchase of three new buildings. Come on. These buildings will be in certain locations and zones of Sydney. We're looking at places in the Hornsby Shire for our Hornsby people. We're looking at places in the upper northern beaches for our Avalon peeps. We're looking at places on the lower north shore for our North Sydney people. We're looking at places and buildings in existing go-to areas where there's already some hustle and bustle, close to public transport, places with uh, great kids' facilities, buildings which we can renovate to fit our C3 culture, places which are close to public transport. This is our vision. If we think about our own journeys with Christ, if you think about the most significant moments that you have had with the Lord, haven't they all been on the altar in a place which has been prepared by others for you to meet with God? If we think about the place where we met with Jesus, where we fell in love with the Lord, if you think about the place where you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you're filled with fire, if you think about the place that you went to when you were broken and you just needed a touch from Him, wasn't it in a place on the altar, a place that was prepared for you in one of our buildings? You know, I think about the beautiful orange roofs that are scattered along the Wakers Parkway for the Northern, Be Northern Beaches residents to see over the last 25 years. And anyone who has a car in the west of Sydney would have driven along Silverwater Road at some point and seen that enormous C3 church sign that towers over that street. Did you know that every single day almost 50,000 cars travel up and down that road, Silverwater Road? And for each one of those cars, for each person in that car, when they see that sign, that is a beacon of hope. It's a place of refuge. And that's why we are mandated and we must prepare a place. We must purchase permanent locations for each one of our locations. Now, this part of our mission, this part of our vision, it's going to cost about three to, sorry, CPI just went up. It's going to cost five to seven million dollars per building. Per building. That's for each location. And wouldn't it be amazing for us as vision builders, us as a church across Sydney, together to say we are going to prepare. We are going to give sacrificially towards this vision so that each one of our locations can have a permanent home. This is our vision. by Helen Lovejoy. When somebody, please think of the children. <laughs> the Bible commands us to train a child up in the way that they should go. And when they are older, they will not depart from it. Children of our day and age are being faced and questioned with things far earlier than we were in our childhoods. There is no doubt that there is an ideological war on the hearts and minds and identities of children today. We must step in now. 
at our most recent Easter Sunday service, we saw 302 children attending our Easter Sunday morning service. That record-breaking number compares to 242 just a couple of years prior. We are a church of generations. I am thrilled to announce that we are finally in phase two of the Oxford Falls Kids renovation status to our three to 12 year old rooms. This sees all children's facilities accessible on the one level and not requiring set up or pack up. My four year old daughter, she said to me recently as we were frantically driving to church for set up, she said, it's okay if we're late mom, as long as Jesus is there. Well, you know what, honey? I just got two hours sleep in and Jesus is already there. Amen. Amen. We have always had children's services of a high caliber with well-researched and detailed biblical content, fresh worship and Holy Spirit encounters. This will all remain, but it is time we shifted our focus to cater to the needs of the whole child of today, which includes their social and emotional needs as well as their physical and spiritual needs. This particular renovation includes state-of-the-art play areas. It has tiered seating for all to be able to see and participate on one level. It has uh, lower stages, more updated technology. We're talking a ball pit, a handball court, fresh and clean new bathrooms, updated technology, special designated areas for families to connect. It is going to be amazing. We are thrilled to say that this will be completed at the end of this year. Woohoo! Amen. And it is costing $1.5 million. Our next project will be to update the, the children's facilities at the Silverwater location. And then we will move on to pro providing new equipment for our rental locations at Avalon, Hornsby and North Sydney. We want our child, children to come into this church and feel like they don't want to leave. Let's let our children feel like little Dorothys who walk into the doors of church and say, there's no place like home. Speaking to his disciples after his resurrection, Jesus said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. So here are four ways that we as C3SYD are going out into the world and specifically our beautiful city of Sydney, partnering and witnessing the name of Jesus. Firstly, through our locations. Through our locations, we've been able to partner with so many great organizations. These partnerships include financial investments, food hampers, parcels, training, and other goods and services. Some of the, locations, some of the organizations that we partner with include St. Lucy's School in Warunga, which is a school for students with disabilities, and Niami Western Sydney which provides services for people experiencing the impacts of mental health. We know that the need is there in our community for these services. And that's why we have a budgeted investment of $35,000 towards our locations to be able to sustain these partnerships. Secondly, through scripture teaching in schools. As a church, we are passionate. We are so passionate about introducing Jesus to students, and I know there's a number of them in this place. We are passionate about giving them an opportunity to question, explore, and discover faith. I have two beautiful children, 
and they are beneficiaries of scripture teaching in schools. And now that I have seen the benefit firsthand, I feel compelled to tell you, we want to increase the number of students that we are reaching. Yeah, we want to do that. We want to go into new schools that we haven't been into before, but we also want to increase this year from 800 to 900 students. And so our target investment in scripture teaching in schools is $30,000. Thirdly, we want to engage in an issue that is a big one in our city and in our nation, and that is of domestic violence. Domestic violence is a major health and welfare issue in Sydney and in our nation, and it's occurring across all socioeconomic and demographic groups, but is predominantly affecting women and children. Did you know that the Australian Bureau of Statistics Personal Safety Survey reports that one in six women experience domestic violence. 2.2 million experience violence at the hands of a partner. And 1.4 million experience violence from another family member. These are horrid numbers. In Greater Sydney alone, in 2023, there were over 19,000 cases of domestic violence assault. And that number, it's increasing year on year. But we can make a difference. We can play a part. And that's why the opportunity to partner with Mission Australia to be able to provide support for victims of domestic violence is one that is exciting for us. So Mission Australia, they provide more than just accommodation and housing. They're involved in policy research and development. And they've recently offered us the opportunity to partner with their Kingswood location, Kingswood Centre, and their Fairfax House, which is co-located in Western Sydney. These two centres, they provide much needed emergency and temporary housing for victims of domestic violence while they access legal and welfare services. We can play a part. That's why we have a budgeted investment of $20,000 into this partnership. Finally, by the authority given to us by Jesus, we are going out into all of the world through our digital content. We know that not everyone that is looking for spiritual insight is turning up to a building. Instead, we see a majority are looking online that's why it's important that we're investing in and occupying the digital landscape. So we want to see an increase in the number of subscribers that we have. We want to see an increase in the number of platforms that we are on and more people interacting with our content. We want to see our content being shared with your family and friends where there is a specific need and our content meets that need. We want to do all of this in Greater Sydney, because salvation is coming to Sydney. A great return of sons and daughters is underway. And a great harvest of new believers awaits us. home we are committed to seeing our nation make his name known our heart is to be part of God's redeeming work in this country by coming alongside indigenous Australians in New South Wales allow me to introduce you to Sharon Wright Sharon has a long-standing relationship with C3 attending presence conferences over the years and training members of her team through C3 College Sharon is the lead pastor of Hope Community. And since 2009, they have planted three churches in Condoblin, Wagga Wagga, and Bogabilla, creating a place of worship for Indigenous Australians in Western New South Wales. Hope Community is providing vulnerable families with food hampers 
and support to those impacted by drought and flood throughout the year. They are working closely with victims of domestic violence with a particular focus on providing women and children with the practical means to maintain their dignity and connect them in with the church as a place of safety and refuge. Hope Community has vision to expand. They want to build relationships and resources with other churches and pastors working in remote areas of New South Wales and serving Aboriginal people. We believe in this vision. We want to empower and expand the impact of Hope Community. And to do so, we are seeking to support and resource three key areas, training, technology, and team. Training. We will provide scholarships to C3 College, as well as express training to the team of leaders and pastors working in these communities, as well as continual coaching for Sharon as she prepares to leave her work and focus on building this church full time. Technology. We want to enhance the awareness and communication of Hope Community. And to do so, we'd like to help them build their website, as well as providing good quality donated items such as computers and AV systems, along with all of the training to go with it. This will also allow other churches and pastors in these remote areas to tap into those same resources and meet together online. And finally, team. We, the church, are called to love in action, which is why we're excited to offer short-term ministry trips. We're excited to make a tangible difference as we come side by side with these communities. We believe that as we, our teams come alongside theirs, our heart and our posture is one to listen and serve in a way that fosters a hopeful future for these people. Our Vision Builders Pledge is $25,000 to invest into Hope Community as this church becomes a place of safety and refuge and justice and love for our Indigenous Australians. To quote Sharon, I'm believing for revival in our land and for healing and hope to flow from community to community. And to that we say, we are with you. <laughs> so. Australia, the beautiful land that we call home. We are committed to seeing our nation make his name known. Vision is the hallmark of the people of God. Firstly, God opens our eyes to see Him, to see His heart, His nature, His will, and His ways. Then He opens our eyes to see our world, its brokenness and its beauty, what it was in the beginning, but what it could be again. And then He opens our eyes to see our part in His story and our purpose in His redemptive plan to see a world where heaven and earth have been reconciled, where his kingdom has come and his will has been done. You see, we're not waiting to escape a world that God's given up on. God has never discarded or despised brokenness. He's always moved into the middle of it. And he's using us, his church, to bring renewal, restoration, and redemption to it. We are rebuilders. We are peacemakers. We are ambassadors, called to bring light into the darkness, into dark places. At C3SYD, we have a vision to partner with organizations around the world who are bringing heaven to earth in tangible and transformative ways. Organizations like Takoro, who are bringing education and maternal health care to vulnerable women in Uganda. They're doing this through mobile medical centers, boarding schools, and as of 2025, a 42-bed maternity hospital that's currently under construction. Our contribution will add another 200 birthing kits to their resources. 
Also, we'll be supporting the East Africa Entrepreneur Program, who are helping people break out of the poverty cycle through mentoring and microfinancing. Through their work, thousands of people will be trained and hundreds of new businesses will launch, changing the entire landscape of local communities. Our contribution goal of $15,000 will help continue to drive this mission forward. We'll also be continuing to support Child Action Lanka, bringing help and support to the disadvantaged children in the nation of Sri Lanka. They now have nine child development centers all around the nation, representing 2,000 children being served and supported every single day. Our contribution goal of $40,000 will help bring another 100 children off the streets. It's worth noting that uh, through members of our community who have been connected with Cal through C3SYD, another $180,000 will be donated this year. Finally, International Justice Mission, who are working around the world to strengthen justice systems, protect communities, and end modern day slavery. To date, they have seen over 80,000 people rescued from slavery, and in the coming year, hope to see at least another 10,000. One of the worst forms of slavery today is what's known as OSEC, the online sexual abuse, sexual exploitation of children. This is where traffickers use the internet to sell the live streamed sexual abuse of children. The Philippines right now is the global epicenter of this crime. And sadly, Australia is the third highest consumer. It's our intention and our heart to support the IJM Philippines operations to help continue to combat this horrendous evil. Our contribution goal of $50,000 will fund another 10 rescue operations, bringing countless children's lives back into freedom. <laughs> on, a, on a personal note, just two years ago, I visited the IJM Philippines office and got to visit one of the aftercare shelters where children who were rescued come uh, to be restored. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, this is at the very core of God's heart. Now, as we know, every year there are unexpected and tragic events that take place all around the world. Things that we can't, pre we can't predict, but we can prepare for. And so we have allotted a, a portion of funds that is ready to be distributed if and when crisis may arise. Vision is the hallmark of the people of God. We see a world where people are safe. We see a world where people are fed. We see a world where people are healed and educated. We see a world where the church is present. And we see a world where the fingerprints of God are irrefutable. Come on, everybody, why don't you give it up for Jesus right now and all that he has planned to do through our church. Can you thank our presenters tonight? Didn't they do amazing? Wow. And they did all that with no notes. And I've got notes. So thank God for that. Come on, give it up for the guys one more time. Isn't that exciting? Well done, team. So you heard the five pillars, our buildings, Next Generation, Sydney, Australia, and the globe. And the first two areas are aimed at our, really aimed at the advancement of our local church in Sydney, uh, and the, that's buildings in Next Gen. And every facility we're gonna be building, uh, like kids' facilities in every place, we really want kids' ministry to be front and center, something we really value. And then the last three areas are aimed at spreading the gospel beyond our local church. Truly really is inspired by Acts 1 verse 8. It says, But you receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And Jerusalem really represents our city, Sydney, which we love. Judea and Samaria, the region, the nation. 
and to the earth below. And, uh, you know, as we talk about buildings, this is kind of a, us taking new ground. Here's a big step of faith. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, we're not thinking that's going to happen tomorrow. That's going to take time. Uh, we we uh, are not going to be running around just snatching in anything that presents itself. We really do want to see that every location is at about 300 people attendance before we go and purchase a facility, that we have already running multiple services sustainably so that we can maximize these facilities, that we have 30 to 40 connect groups in the surrounding suburbs of those locations, and then we have a, a ratio of like one to seven leaders, truly is about our span of care. And we wanna, we wanna be able to care and disciple people well. And so that's kind of what will trigger us starting to really actively look to purchase for one of our locations that needs a building. Amen. 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 John Stott, I don't know if you've heard of this guy, John Stott, a British Anglican priest, is one of the leading voices of the evangelical movement around the world. He said this, he said, ambitions for self may be quite modest. Ambitions for God, however, if they are to be worthy, can never be modest. There is something inherently inappropriate about cherishing small ambitions for God. How can we ever be content that he should acquire just a little more honor in the world? No. Once we are clear that God is king, then we long to see him crowned with glory and honor and accorded his true place, which is the supreme place. We become ambitious for the spread of his kingdom and righteousness everywhere. Church, I want you to hear me tonight. We, we are not asking God to do small things. We are asking God to do big things. We're not asking God to do something that is risk-free or comfortable. It's not what we're here to ask God to do. We're not here to ask God to do something that we can achieve without him. We're asking God to do something that is beyond measure, that could only be explained by the hand of God. Not by our ingenuity, not by our talent or skill, not by how smart we are, but by the fact that God is at work in our church. We're asking God, amen everybody. We, we are asking God in light of eternity, in light of the fact that eternal separation from God is real, in light of the fact that lost people are in fact lost, in light of the fact that life is temporary, in light of the fact that we are not beggars, we are children of God, and we should come boldly to the throne of grace, and we should ask God big things. And we should, listen, we should by no means be asking God to do big things uh, for our ego, for our glory, our credit, because we need our insecurities met by some kind of sense of achievement, because we, we need to beat other churches or compete. If that's, if that's why, then that's a terrible reason. We must be building health and maturity into everything we do. We should be absolutely be living above reproach with humility, with no pride. Pride should not be anywhere near the church of Jesus Christ. We should be known for our humility. God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. And we don't wanna be operating in such a way when we think it's the devil we think it's something else, we think it's someone else, we think it's the government, we think it's them, we think it's that. Could be God resisting us if we are operating out of pride. We must be humble, we must be thirsty, we must be dependent. We must do nothing with a narcissistic 
approach or endeavor. We must pursue the freedom of self-forgetfulness where we aren't thinking less of ourselves, but we're thinking about ourselves less. Come on, everybody. And therefore, on that basis, that it's not about us, on the basis that, that it's not about us feeding our ego or our insecurities or competing or getting a name for ourselves, on the basis that, that we are humble before God. We must ask Him to do big things in our nation, our city, and the world. We must, because it is not about us. It is not, big things is not about us. It is not about some, some label that we are big. It is about God's kingdom. It is about what Jesus wants to do in the earth. It is not about us. It is not about our agenda. It's about the millions of people who are yet to receive the gospel. It's about Jesus' kingdom. So our ambition, church, I want you to hear this. Our, our ambition shouldn't be uh, small. It shouldn't be measured. It should be large. It should be ambitious. It should be audacious because it's not about us. It's not about us. And when it's about us, yeah, we should be awkward about it. If it's about C3SYD, yeah, you should be a little embarrassed about it. This is not about C3SYD. The goal is not C3SYD. The goal is Jesus Christ's kingdom being advanced in the earth, everybody. Come on. C3SYD is a conduit to what God is doing in the earth. So we must... Ask God to do big things. David said in Psalm 34, 1 to 3, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Look at this in verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Now, please, please notice for a second. It doesn't say, oh, minimize the Lord with me. It doesn't say, oh, come on, let's bring the Lord's name down to a place where we're comfortable, to a zone where we can handle him, to a place where we can control him. That is not the scripture. When we praise God, when we magnify God, we are not bringing God down to our way of thinking and our level of thinking. We're actually elevating our thinking to where He is. Praise and worship is so important because it takes us out of ourselves and into God's mind. God is above, He is not beneath. Colossians 3, 1 to 3, if, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. We are looking up, everybody, and we are expecting big things of our God. And I pray that the church is reinvigorated, that our church, that every church in Sydney is reinvigorated with faith in God, that He is above and not beneath. We should not fear people's opinion. We should not fear what people say. The church must expand. This has always been God's intention. We read in the book of Acts, Acts 2.41, 3,000 people were baptized on that day where the disciples began to speak in another language. The people getting saved were being added to their number in Acts 2.47. In Acts 4 verse 4, 5,000 men believed after hearing the gospel preached, that is not including women and children. The church was increasing in Acts 6 verse 1, and the church was multiplying in Acts 9 verse 31. God wants His church to expand everybody. God wants His church to grow. And, and one of the great traits of the New Testament church was radical generosity. It was. They were giving their resources to see the church strengthened, 
and the gospel spread throughout Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. A radical generosity is the calling on the church. We know that radical generosity is not about how much. It's about equal sacrifice. It's about our heart. We know it's about asking God and saying, God, what, what would you have me do? It's not about responding to pressure. It's not about responding to a person. It's about responding to God. And I'm not here asking you to do something that God hasn't asked you to do. I'm asking you to ask God, what part would he have you play? When we give, when, when, when we embrace generosity towards the church of Jesus Christ, it prepares a way, like Leon said so well, it prepares the way for the glory of Lord to be revealed. Our generosity is us partnering with God. And you've got to understand this. God's, God's way is partnership. He's not going to do it any other way. He's going to do it through the local church. Everything God has planned is going to happen through the local church. He's not getting a new plan. I know, there, I know the church is not perfect. Come on. It's because you're here. And I'm here. And we must have integrity. And we must believe God to expand his church. We must partner with him as we prepare a way for God's glory to be revealed. Right now, I just want you to look to God. We are going to be asking God to do big things, everybody, unapologetically. Because it's not about us. It's about his kingdom. And you've got to understand, as you, as you look to God right now, Holy Spirit, come. Oh, there's the Holy Spirit. The keys. <laughs> you know, like, there are, there are charities and there are organizations and 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 they do wonderful work. Um, but the thing you gotta understand that is unique about the church is anything a charity or another organization does that's not in the name of Christ, it won't last forever. It, it actually has a use by date. But everything that is done in the name of Jesus lasts forever. This is why we're saying invest in the church. This is why we're saying give here. Because what we are using temporal resources, we are taking what is temporary and we are bringing it to God sacrificially. And when we bring it to God sacrificially in His name, what is temporary becomes eternal. We aren't here trying to make temporary resource stay temporary. We are making temporary resource become eternal, last forever. This is why we must back the church. This is why we must invest in what God is doing through the local church, because this is about eternity. As I am praying, keep looking to God right now, everybody. I'm praying that you would overflow. Jess and I, we've been asking God what, what this moment's gonna look like for us. We kind of have a, a four-year target that we're gonna chip away at each year. We're gonna write in our pledge what we're doing this year. But I, I, I'm just asking you to ask God and let's, let's lean in this, into this together as a church. In Jesus' name. So come Holy Spirit. You lead us. We've heard the vision. We've heard why. We've heard the heart. But Lord, this is between each person and you.
So Lord, we thank you for the big things you have in store for the city of Sydney. Big, audacious things that would happen for your kingdom in Sydney. Lord, that the gospel would spread through our city, through our nation, to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name. You can look up, everybody. We're going to pledge right now. And so I'm going to welcome up Leon Shemelian. He's back. And I want you to welcome, on, welcome up Leon as he leads us. Thank you. Can we thank Pastor Rao for that great word? Come on, why don't you really thank him? Well, this is a, a beautiful, sacred moment that we have together right now. I'd love you to... Grab your phones, who's got a phone with them, smartphone. Androids will work for this moment as well. Ash. So why don't you grab your phone? We're gonna take a moment now to, to respond to what we've heard tonight, to the, to the vision, these new five pillars that we have to our vision builder's vision. And to respond to, like Pastor Al said, that we're not telling you, we're not being told tonight to, to, to give a certain amount, but, but we're being asked to ask God. So I'd ask you right now just to, to ask God what it is that He would have you pledge tonight, in what way He would have you involved in this great, great work that He is doing and that we get to partner with. So tonight you would have received a text message already, a text message from our church with a link. And if you click on that link, it's going to take you to an online pledge form. We do have hard copy forms here as well. They're located just at the info desk. You can grab those once we're finished with the official part of the evening. But if you've got a phone, we'd love you to take a moment to just tap on that link in the text that you receive and it'll take you to a form and in a cheerful way not under compulsion you know this is a joy this is a joy that we get to partner with God in what he is doing and I love you we would love you to take a moment in whatever way God has spoken to you tonight and how you can be involved to complete this pledge form just going through the form, just ask for your name, your phone number, email address. And it says, believing in the future of his house, we willingly commit to give by the 30th of June next year. So this is what we're, we're, we're saying to God, we are committing to give over the next 12 months to the 30th of June next year. And you may have a plan, like Pastor Al said, that you're chipping away at over a longer period of time. But for this pledge, we'd ask that you put in the amount that you're committing to give between now and the 30th of June next year. Your location, and that's purely for administrative purposes. And you'll notice that there's a box that says, I require a tax deduction, yes or no. Uh, if you don't require a tax deduction for your giving, we would love you to consider to uh, tick the box that says no because that means that we can use those funds for a lot more of the vision that we've heard about tonight but if tax deductibility is, is something we need that's great too how are we going with these forms give me a wave if you're done a few shy waves there big waves give me a wave if you're done I love that Angus big wave Malcolm big wave Fantastic. And we're asking that you not give out of something that you don't have. This is a faithful step that we're taking and we're giving out of what we have. We're not giving out of credit. We're not taking loans to give to vision builders. So please keep that in mind. And in completing this as well over the course of the year, regular, regular giving is always a great way to go whether it's a direct debit, that's how, that's how we usually do it. We just set and forget. It just goes out automatically. But think about what it is that you can sacrifice. 
Maybe it's sacrificing. Maybe it's pushing back that vacation, that holiday that you were thinking about. Maybe it's cutting back on how many coffees you have a day. Maybe from two to one. We're in Sydney, it's probably going from four to three for a lot of us. But whatever it is, with a cheerful heart, we are sacrificing to this incredible vision. How are we going out there? All done. We're great. All done. All done over here. All done over here. All done over here. Hallelujah. Wonderful. I commend you, church. You guys are incredible. What an amazing thing that we get to do together as a church, as a family, as one big family doing this together with God. Thanks, Leon. Thank you for leading us through that moment. Thank you, Leon. Thank you. Well, church, what a, what a sacred moment. Yeah. Do you feel stirred? I feel stirred. Yeah. I feel stirred. I feel stirred. Good. Well, we want to... Um, yeah. Just, you just lost the moment. <laughs> I'm just going to go back to a sacred Sorry, moment. sorry, yeah. Sacred, holy. We just want to say thank you, church. Thanks for your yeah. sacrifice. Yes. Thank you for uh, making a way mm. in your finances this year. We so um, value being able to do this together. Yeah. And we can do great things together. Yeah. So we want to pray, pray and just seal this sacred moment yeah. before we go and have fun. Amen. Why don't we okay. stand up, everybody? Feel free to hold someone's hand if it's appropriate. <laughs> Don't be weird. <laughs> uh, we gotta have fun. You ready? Let's pray. Father, we, we come before you in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega. Lord Jesus, everything is for you, to you, and through you. Lord Jesus, you are, the, you are the prize that our eyes are looking at, Lord. You're our great reward. Lord Jesus, you are what we are pursuing. You are who we desire. Lord God, you're the great desire of our heart. Lord Jesus, to know you and to have everybody know you. Lord God, that everybody in this city would know Christ Jesus. And so, Lord, we bring what we have to give that is temporary, that's resource. And, Lord, we bring it to you. We, we place it in your hands. Lord, we, we place it and we tr entrust it into your hands. Lord Jesus, that as you break it and you multiply it, Lord, that you would breathe on it. Lord, that it would achieve far more than it could ever achieve in our hands. Lord, that it would do more than it could ever do in our hands than if we were to hold on to it, Lord. Father, that it would be used for your glory, used for your kingdom. Lord, that your kingdom would come in this hour. God, we are frustrated by the state of the world. We are frustrated by the state of people's lives. That darkness seems to be increasing. Lord, we pray, use us to let the light increase. Use our offering. Use our gift here tonight to expand your kingdom, that the gospel would be known by those that seem so far from God right now, from those that seem so far from help right now. We pray, Lord, help us see beyond ourselves to lift our eyes. Use what we have to give in Jesus' name. God, we want you to use it. We want it to be used and to be useful in the hands of God. Make us good stewards. Lord, that it would be for your glory and for your kingdom to come. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. They all said a good hearty C3SYD. Amen. Amen, amen, amen.